Now, buyers in the small hatchback segment are one of the most discerning and pickiest out there. Why? Because usually this is going to be their first car, a car that they bring their families in, going out on vacations, getting the groceries in, you know, sending the kids out to school. Good thing Suzuki's got them covered. What's going on guys, Roy Robles here from zigwheels.ph and today we'll be taking a look at the Suzuki Celerio. This thing is going to change the way you look at small hatchbacks. Before we begin, I'd like to say that I love small cars. Now, the thing about small cars is that you've got to make a good first impression. You've got those circular headlamps, you got this nice chrome strip that runs across this honeycomb looking grille, you got a short hood right here which houses something special which I'll show you guys later on. Also, they've applied this K-car looking concept down below for the lower grille that houses those circular fog lamps. Overall, the look of the third generation Suzuki Celerio definitely makes a great impression, especially looking from the front. Now heading over to the side profile of the Suzuki Celerio, here's something that you don't usually see brands offer, especially in this segment. You've got 15 inch alloy wheels which are blacked out and really fill up those wheel wells quite well. And the thing that Suzuki kind of cut a little bit a few corners here are these things. You see this 90s looking pull up door handles right here and look at this. This looks like an afterthought. You have to put your key right in. It's not integrated into the pull up door handles. It's right there. Well, it's something. At least it gives it a little bit more character. Also those amber cheek lights at the side. Now, it's the small details that count for the Suzuki Solario. As you can see, they've got these large doors right here, which open up to an almost 90 degree angle, making it easy for anyone to get inside. Let's check out the rear and see how that goes. Now, heading over to the rear of the Suzuki Solario, here is something that I really appreciate. Too bad not a lot of people will get to see this because you won't be overtaking a lot of the other cars on the road. What I like to emphasize is these tail lamps. These tail lamps look like these baby shark looking things. Remember that song back in the day? I'm glad that died a natural death, but it makes a comeback with the Suzuki Celerio with this baby shark looking smoke tail lamps. You also got pull up handles right here, this rear windshield wiper. Now, one thing you'd notice is that if those wheels look like they fill up those wheel wells quite well from the side profile, eh, not so much in the rear. Some people notice that it actually looks kind of skinny, but I think it's just par for the course, especially for these small hatchbacks, so that should not be a problem. So let's take a look at this hatch and see how it works as a hatch by opening the hatch. All right, so as you can see, the opening is pretty narrow, so it's gonna be hard for you to put in large items in the back, but once you do, you're treated to 313 liters of space, which is more than enough for anyone going out of town or for at least a week's worth of groceries. From what you can see here, you can see all our crap inside definitely fits and it can still fit more crap. If you need even more space, you can fold the seats down. They split 60-40. Plus, you've got this tunnel cover that works as a shelf. So if you need to cover all your stuff in there or put some other stuff on top, shouldn't be a problem. So let's take a look at the inside and see how that works. Now inside the Suzuki Celerio, you are a wash in a sea of black hard plastic, which of course is par for the course in this segment again, but at least it's nicely sculpted and everything is easy to reach. Now a few of the convenience features you'd find in the Suzuki Celerio is of course these power windows. You also got these manual AC controls right here, a seven inch touchscreen infotainment system, although it is Sony branded and not Suzuki, at least you've got it, right? It's also got a rudimentary system to link your smartphone to it and mirror your smartphone to that small dinky screen, which doesn't have, isn't really that bright, but at least you have something, right? It doesn't have Android Auto app or CarPlay, unfortunately, probably we'll be seeing that in a future update. Right, so inside at least it's again, nicely sculpted. You got your armrest right here, but no armrest in the middle but the thing i love about suzuki is that they actually place some of the buttons right here to make sure that your space is maximized for example you got your power window controls right here in the dashboard as well as here right behind the handbrake for the rear passengers that saves up a lot of space right here on the door panels make sure that you have more room for your arms there you go. And not just for useless electronics. Speaking of useless electronics, there are no USB ports to speak of whatsoever, except 
on the seven inch touchscreen infotainment system. So that's basically too slow to charge your phone. So I guess you'll have to buy one of those third party chargers and stick it right there on a 12 volt socket. And one thing that the Celerio has over the Espresso is this. You've got buttons right here to control your media. So there you go. You definitely don't have at least a blank steering wheel. And yeah, that's basically it. This is all I can say about the uh, Suzuki Celerio. Up front, let's take a look at the rear and see what's what. All right, so in the rear here of the Suzuki Celerio, it's got space for days. Now, although I am seated behind my own natural driving position, which is way back, I still have a lot of space for my knees and my legs. And uh, the footwell right here below is pretty deep. So even if you have size 12 shoes like I do, it still fits there perfectly. Now, there's no center armrest in the back as well. And uh, yeah, it's all hard plastics right here. And you don't get any toys to play with, except of course the power window switches that there. You do get bottle holders right here at the side panel of the doors. And that's basically it. So in conclusion, space for days, and that's all. Hey, Suzuki says you can actually fit five people here. So three in the back. Let's see how that works out for our team. So as you can see, it can barely fit <laughs> three six footers in the back and you got to be real good friends with these guys if you want to sit in the back right here all the way to Baguio. What up Baguio? No? Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're behind the wheel of the all-new Suzuki Celario. So before we start on about the performance, the MBH and the usual stuff, I'd like to start with the transmission. So the transmission on the Suzuki Celerio is what they call, or what Suzuki calls, automated gear shift, or sometimes called automatic manual transmission. Now, a lot of car buyers were miffed by the fact that they can't get the Suzuki Espresso unless they learned how to drive a manual transmission. Now Suzuki counters back with this, the Suzuki Celerio, and it is available with an almost automatic transmission. I call it almost because like I said, you still got mechanical bits underneath that resembles a manual. It's just controlled by a computer. I won't go as far as calling this a fully automatic car because when you put it on D and you start going on an uphill, it starts to... It's not as intuitive as I want it to be. It hunts for gears. It actually kind of acts like a person who's learning how to drive a manual. You have to keep the mindset that you're driving a manual transmission. So if you mash the pedal down, you're not going to get that constant surge of power. It's going to have to take a split second before it brings the power back as it shifts up, like so. There you go, see? I'd like to point out that engine noise definitely permeates inside the cabin, which leads me to what the engine is under that hood. It's a one liter three cylinder engine that makes 67 horsepower and 90 newton meters of torque. Now you might think that that's not a lot, which it definitely isn't, but considering that this car only weighs 800 kilograms, that's about four of me, it's definitely enough power to get you through. So steering is light. Of course, this is a small hatchback and suspension wise, you've got, of course, your McPherson struts up front and a bar, a torsion bar back in the rear. But I gotta say, yeah, as expected from a small hatchback, it's definitely nimble. It's definitely a smooth ride, I'd give you that. The reason behind that is that it's got Suzuki's Hartec technology. So the body's more rigid than the previous model. It's rigid, it's safer. They use a higher tensile steel, which is also lighter. And that's why you got the 800 kilograms of weight of this one. So braking is surprisingly good. Sometimes when you drive a mini hatchback, you get that spongy feel whenever you start braking as if it's been used and abused for quite some time now. But this one right off the bat, you can easily modulate it. No problems, no dramas there at all. Safety features include dual airbags. You got ABS with electronic brake force distribution. Of course, your seat belts, isofix anchors right in the back. You also have hill start assist. You got stability control. Stability control and a small car like this it's definitely hard to find. Also, you got backup sensors. But the odd thing about this is that if you check out the seven inch touchscreen infotainment system there, there's a button for the rear camera, but you, once you click on it, it <laughs> says video not found. 
I guess they had to put some sort of provision to put the camera at the back, but the save on cost, they omitted it. So here comes to the best part. Why you buy a Suzuki Solario? It's for fuel economy. Combining that lightweight, the small engine, the automated gear shift system, and the automatic start-stop system where it actually shuts the engine off when you're on idle, fuel economy is definitely one of its highest selling points. I was able to net around 13 kilometers per liter in the city on this baby. And going out on the open road, forget it, around 20 kilometers per liter. Pricing for the all new Suzuki Celerio starts at 708,000 pesos for the one with a manual transmission, while the automated gear shift variant will cost you 754,000 pesos. So there you have it folks. As you can see, Suzuki is not afraid to discover new tech and apply it on their cars, especially in these budget cars. But what do you think? Does the Suzuki Celerio have what it takes to take on the more established models in this segment? Drop us a comment in the comment section down below. And while you're at it, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification icon so that you are alerted whenever we upload a new video. This is Roy Robles from ZigWheels.ph and I'll see you guys next time.